All right, man. Woo! Why did I? Ugh, that was fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Pod Ticket Podcast. You know what it is, man. I'm Marcus. That's FAM, bro. Episode 47, man. We're uh, in our zone now. It's yeah. over. We're in our element. People have been showing us a lot of love, a lot of love that we didn't expect, and uh, we're grateful for it. And we're going to keep this mm. going because mm. God bless it. We're here. Okay. <laughs> Three more episodes to yeah. 50. Shout out, shout out to, shout out to all. Uh... Fergie C, you know, for showing love, he gave me a phone call. He gave us a lot of props, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So, yeah, let's get it, bro. Let's go, man. It's over, dude. How you How you been, my brother? I've been all right, dog. I've been mm-hmm. all right. I really didn't go anywhere this week. I swear to God. I put that <laughs> on every family member I have. Watch, watch, I watch. didn't go anywhere. You know what he does? You know what he what? does, y'all? <laughs> on the public episode where everyone gets it, he'll say, yeah, I didn't do anything. But then on the Patreon where there's like a couple people there, <laughs> he starts to, oh, you, oh, I forgot. Yo, I went chill. to Vegas and then New yeah. York. Yeah. And then I stopped over and te- like he... He'll do this. This oh, is what he does. God, bro. So, <laughs> yeah. No, nah, I didn't. I, <laughs> I really didn't do much, man, except work at my damn job. But mm-hmm. when I went in yesterday, mm-hmm. I went in yesterday and they have this. Uh, they had these two little flyers uh, for this company party that's supposed to happen within the month. Uh-huh. And, but there's two options. Right. And they're both taking place at Paramount, Paramount, Paramount Studios. One is Saturday what? night. Yeah, yeah, that's what I, yeah. And I stayed, I was like, oh, oh, interesting. <laughs> How interesting is this? Saturday night, and then the other option is Sunday afternoon, like some kind of brunch thing. And immediately in my head, I was like, brunch, Sunday, day drinking. I'm old as shit. I can't hang it Saturday night anymore. This is going to be awesome. But then I thought about it, and I was like, I fucking work on Sunday. What the hell are we going to do? What am I going to do? I mean, you know, the, yeah, I usually just do the good old... Uh, I cannot make it, dude. I'm tired, <laughs> you know? But then I was like, if I go on Saturday night, like I'll work, I get off at six and then go at seven to the thing on Saturday night. But then I was like, then I have to leave at like 12 to come home and sleep and wake back up at six to come to work. So I'm like, I don't want to do... I just call out. Yeah, I'm just thinking about calling out. But then I hear that they're going to do some restructuring for the schedules for people who actually work on the weekends to come and make it. So I was oh. like, you know what? Yeah, I'm going Sunday because I was going to go Saturday just to accommodate. But I was like, I don't want to go to work the next day after probably a heavy night of drinking. Wait, you can't go both? Nah, you got to pick one option. What? Why? Yeah, I don't know. What? <laughs> yeah, right. That would be awesome to just be able to go to both. But I don't I don't you know. Can't, you can't get it in with like one of your coworkers and be like, hey, brother, you show work. For real. Edge. Right. <laughs> let me. Yeah. Right. Let me be the let me be your plus one. And then you yeah. can be my plus one the next day. You know, how but, how, how many people work for your company? Uh, shit. A shitload, dude. So they, I mean, what? Is hey. you do that at the front of the door checking IDs? What's yeah, <laughs> right. I don't fucking know. I don't know. Well, I, don't I, know I mean, hey, you know what? I don't do this at parties or Super Bowl events, but in this yeah. case, I think the double dip is appropriate, my brother. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay, so <laughs> I would be down with that too. So, uh, so let me bring this up to you. Which one would you choose? You don't go out much. You don't you don't really drink, which is cool, but there's going to be a lot of food vendors, and it's at Paramount Studios. Saturday okay. night or Sunday afternoon? Okay, food vendors. Mm. That don't really entice me that much. No? Is this st- I still got to pay? Well, yeah. Nah, bro. What, what? Oh, wait. So, so wait, brunch? So if I go to brunch? I br- <laughs> yes. <laughs> Y'all better give out tickets or something. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. So at the brunch, you don't have to pay for food, but at the Paramount, you do have to pay for food? No, 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 no. So both of these things take place at Paramount Studios. But one event is on Saturday night, and then the other event is in Sunday afternoon. Both at Paramount Studios. One oh! Is at, yeah, so one is at some... I don't know what the fuck is going on over there. I don't know what place it is. Something that happens at 7, maybe some kind of club or bar or whatever. And uh-huh. the brunch is like... Uh, it said like studio back lot brunch or something. You like, oh, bro, I'm taking that, bro. I'm, put, you man, might, I'm gonna eat everything like this, dude. With fucking you, napkin okay. on the chest, like, okay. bro. I'm gonna know? tell you right now, you can't, you can't go there Sunday. Why not? You can't, bro. Why? You finna be there with every coworker that you know mm-hmm. that is either 
close to retirement or on menopause. <laughs> Yo, it wait, ain't gonna be no. no, no, it ain't gonna be no 30 something, 20 somethings at the Sunday. Every young, available, emotionally unstable person is yeah. gonna be there <laughs> Saturday night, and that's where you should be. See, that's I said the same thing. And I was like, yeah, you could tell who all the young fools are when they're yeah. going Saturday night and yeah. all the older, more mature, more yeah. wise fools are going on Sunday. But I, you know what I'm saying? There's not a lot of those uh, overly mature people on the list going on Sunday. So I'm like, you know what? This is cool. This is my crowd. The 30 and the 30 and up crowd. <laughs> the 70 year old <laughs> up crowd, bro. You know? Oh, you finna be there. Yeah, half of the table is gonna fall asleep. In the yeah. of <laughs> and I'll join him because I be sleeping hell early too. I, I knock out loud, dog. No, I knock out pretty easy. I, I be calling you. That might be diabetes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. See, I be calling that. I be calling you old, but you can't. You can't submit to the idea of being I'm old. I'm not bro. submitting to the idea. I'm just Choosing doing a, what I want to do. Choose. <laughs> That's even I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to go like you, Saturday night you, and be in a bad mood. Like, I'm a fucking loser. I don't want to be here. <laughs> why would you, why would you be in a, home? Why would you be in a bad mood? Because I don't really like going out on Saturday nights like that, and I have to come into work the next day, so I'm not going to be out long on Sunday. I can be there all day from noon to so so whenever. Sunday. So you're for when is this going to take place? Uh, at the end of the next month. So you are for sure going to have the Sunday off if you go on Sunday. Uh, I hear about the restructuring of the schedule. So I what mean, if they I'm just thinking... what if they just they just move you to night shift? Yeah, no. <laughs> they, oh, see, that's a, no. I would protest. See, that's crazy. Like, moving like, me permanently to, to fucking night shift to accommodate no, that one day. Fuck. Yeah, no, like like just for the day. They're like, you know what? We're just you know we're gonna give you the Sunday night shift because you have Monday off. So check this out. Sunday, you come in, you do the brunch thing at whatever time it is, and then at 4 or 5 p.m., you come clock in until 11 or something like that. You know, I wouldn't be surprised that they do that to me, but if they did, I'm just, I'm not going to take it, and I'm going to call off. Okay. You know? You're okay. making me feel 80 years old. What no, the fuck? Not everybody, you were not going to pass out. Because... <laughs> The because breath, breath. because you you you're 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 like you're like a totally dead set on the idea that your company is going to accommodate you by restructuring in a way that you you like it. I'm but not. My that thing it, is I, these are the same people that are doing Aloha Night. Like they obviously don't care about your yeah, opinions. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's why I'm not. I'm not totally invested in it. Like I, you know, I'm sure they'll pull some some funny stuff. So you know, I always have that move in the back pocket. Uh, no you know so uh, for now it's sunday you know my mind could change i'm fickle um all right so 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 beyond that yeah you guys are having a company party where you have to pay for stuff yeah what kind of company party is that is that normal i don't think so but yeah, like right. when 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 I imagine company parties, it's at a venue that's already uh you know is at a venue and the food is already catered. So the, yeah, there is nothing really. Probably just drinks or you know drink service or whatever. Yeah, that's that's what I imagined in my head. But then it said you know where it's at the location, and I was like, well, I mean, I understand. Like, I mean, I guess we're. I think I don't think we're gonna. They might have like a like a brunch for us, and then there's gonna be hella like other vendors and shit. Maybe that's what we pay for, like the shit that we get at vendors. You know what I I'm think saying? paying for anything at a company party is ridiculous. It should just be a party. <laughs> yeah, Don't put no. your company in this. Like you have nothing to do with this. Like you just, like, you just inviting yeah. us. Like, so if I just if I invite you to Disneyland, is it like Cephas Disneyland? Like that don't make no yeah. sense. <laughs> no, I I understand. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. I'm just you know, I need to get more detail. You're showing me that I need yeah. to get more details on this yeah. party because yeah, how much money am I spending? I already automatically put it in my head. It's like, all right, maybe have two hundred dollars handy. Oh, just in case. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. No, you know what? You should you should say, you know what? Sign me up for Sunday, restructure my my whatever, and mm -hmm. maybe they maybe they do do right by you and give you the Sunday off. I don't mm -hmm. imagine they would because it's a company and they you know. Yeah, then companies don't care about you. Yeah, they'd Stop have putting to... in a hell of years with a company that don't care. They'll cut you loose. <laughs> they'd have they would have to accommodate everyone on Saturday too, like you know. Mm. So I don't know, but if they do, 
I would say sign up for Sunday. Let yeah. them take let them let them wipe your Sunday schedule clean. And then just stay home. Just, just do something for fun for you that don't cost two hundred dollars. Like, yeah. what is the what is the what would be the appeal? What what is enticing about going to a company party that you have to pay for it? Um, probably it's just going. Yeah, yeah, we'll see the homies, but also at the where where it's at. Like, I don't hear much, many company parties where the you know where the thing is at Paramount Studios. But yeah, I understand. Like. I, I'm down to pay if it's like, you know, different vendors and shit, all the shit that I'm interested in and want to get, mm-hmm. you know, but and, and is there like rot? Like, I don't know what Paramount Studios is. Me, really me neither. I, okay. Yeah. So I like, I'm imagining like, uh, uh, like studio backlot, like, uh, in Hollywood and shit, you know, like the different oh. studios where they like do the different movies. And oh, so it's like a shit. tour. I Maybe I I don't know. That's that's what I imagine. I could be completely wrong. Someone here in Southern California, please tell me what the fuck Paramount Studios is because I don't know what the hell is going on, bro. I don't yeah. know. You might be getting jipped, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! Yeah, well, I'm glad yeah. I brought it up because now I'm not just gonna fucking go over there and have two hundred dollars to just be fucking wasted on some bullshit, bro. They better pass y'all out some tickets, some tokens, something that'll get y'all like two free meals from a vendor or something because that's ridiculous. Yeah, I would hope so too. You know, um, the last time I was working in Hawaii, we had a company party at like a like a super old uh, bowling bowling alley. Mm. And uh, I th- I'm pretty I'm, I don't know if I'm mixing up my memories, but one of my coworkers was like, yeah, I'm going to go. I'll pick you up. I was like, cool. This dude picks me up, bro. And in the middle of the call. I mean, in the middle of the drive, he gets a phone call from his girl and they like and then we all work together. I think I think she worked there, but he he was young and she was younger. Like mm-hmm. he was like 19 or 20 and she was like 18. Mm-hmm. And so she calls. This fool. She just goes off. She oh, was shit. like, I can't believe you did this to me in front of your friends. And he was like, I'm so and he and he my, my my dog, he was like, cool. I ain't talked to him in a minute. I wonder how he been. But he he was like a really just a you know, very neutral guy. He wasn't like he wasn't an angry guy, he wasn't a mm. sad guy, he was just like always there. Mm. And he was always neutral, like he didn't really have emotions, he Damn, wasn't that's really hard to do. <clears throat> what the I, fuck? I know he was <clears throat> I don't know, man. He was he was stone faced, you know. Oh, he did. <laughs> His girl was ripping on him. She was like, I can't believe you did that. I can't believe, you know, you would say that in front of those guys. I don't even know them. Now your friends think I'm crazy. They probably think I'm some crazy B word. You know, you're, you're, I can't believe you would let that happen in front of people. And then he was Mm -hmm. just like, you're right. I'm sorry. And then then she goes, he goes, she goes, Where where are you at? He was like, uh, I'm in the car right now. Just, uh, we're headed to the company party. She was like, I thought you said you had to pick up your friend. He was like, oh. I did. And she was like, Am I on speaker right now? And he was like, <laughs> she was like, he, was like he looked at me. I was like, Yo, no, no. Yo, Yo. Looked at me. He's driving. He looked at me. He goes, Yes. <laughs> she was like, <laughs> What? And she just hung up the phone. And then he just was like, and then she calls back, and then she calls back, bro. And then she just curses him out crazy. And it's all, and we in this little, uh, like little fast car, like you know, he Asians in Hawaii, so he got a little fast car. Yeah, she started going, "You mother effort," da, 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 like going <laughs> off on this fool. Yeah. And I'm near, like, I'm on my phone. I don't got no yeah. Wi Fi. Yo, no, no. Wifi all, what bro. were you playing, bro? I no. was just I was just checking my email. I was just reading the <laughs> timeline from tweets from 28 minutes ago over and over. Bro. <laughs> no, she is cursing this fool out. She said, you know, uh, like, you know, she was like even going into like, I'll kill myself and blah, blah, blah. It's like she going oh, off. Shoot. And then she and then she just says everything and just hangs up. And then this, bruh, I swear to you, my dog didn't look at me at all. I didn't. I wasn't really trying to look at him. I was like side eyeing him. Well, yeah, of course, bro. We on the highway. This fool started hitting a hundred and some miles. Oh, right? no. He started going like this. He started gripping the wheel. And this was like, I was looking. I was like, I'm about to sock this fool in his face. <laughs> like, 
Like, bro, <laughs> don't take this out on me, bro. We're bro, both in here. Bro, I was like, what the hell? This fool just, oh, just speeding. And then she no. and then she calls back and he keeps answering. I'm like, why are you? I um bro. I was like, first of all, why did you even tell her I was here? And now and then she calls back and she goes, uh, hi, uh, you know, so-and-so's friend. I'm so sorry. You know that my boyfriend is a mother oh F and B. Oh my god! Bro. He's trying. She was like, she was talking to me through the speakers. Like, He's trying to make me look crazy in front of his friends, but I'm not. I'm just very upset. This is what it sounds like when you know you're. A this woman is what it sounds like <laughs> when <laughs> dogs cry. <laughs> 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 Bro, Whoa. when I tell you, dog. I was so scared in the car. I, I didn't even know what to say. I was just like, oh, okay. Like, yeah, don't, why, don't answer. Just, just, then she, just hangs up, she hangs up again, bro. We finally get to this spot. And then, oh, man, bro. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I want to go home. <laughs> I want to go home. I want to go home. <laughs> as soon as. As soon as we get to this spot, I'm asking everyone else. Yeah. Hey, you got room in your car? Hey, you got room in your car? <laughs> like, I didn't even, I didn't even eat. They had free pizza. We had free bowling. I said, no, nah, I'm finding me another ride. I'm finna Uber. Oh. And we was far away, too. We was like 30, 35 minutes, 40 minutes from my house. So it was. Shoot. I'm talking to everyone. I finally get someone to say, oh, yeah, yeah I'll take you home. Why? I was like, I don't even want to talk about it, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, oh, bro, oh, no. I mean, just want to crawl into my body, like, bro, I'm not even here right now. Have you? But ever, I have to be here. Have you? Have you ever had like a super awkward situation where people are arguing in front of you and you just there? Yeah, like when it's usually family though. Oh, okay. like when like when siblings yell at each other, or when like or like when their moms go off on their kids and shit you know and you're the kid's friend yeah 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 you know you ever caught a stray bullet uh probably yeah a couple times i don't really remember though and if i did i don't remember (laughs) i blocked that out of my head but uh yeah when i would see like uh 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 uh, what is it parents yelling at their kids and shit or or when you're getting yelled at in front of the homies and shit oh yeah oh you know that's like standard or, oh, that's all oh, fuck. Thankfully, thankfully, and my cousin Maya always brings this up. Thankfully, my mom, she never, she never yelled at me in front of my my cousins. Mm. Like she always would bring me to the side and do that. But my mom, my cousin uh, Maya, he always says, "Man, I have never in my whole life, I have never seen your mom mad. Like every mm. time we go to the house, she always says hi, blah blah." I was like, oh, she be getting mad, bro. <laughs> she be getting mad, bro. Yeah. You don't even know, but <laughs> uh, yeah, I definitely had caught some strays too. Yeah. Like um, like like my cousin, I was over there at their house, and, and I remember one time uh we was trying to play the 64. Mm. It was a 64, I think it might have been Nintendo 64, and it was in the the older cousin. I mean they older my older cousin, it was in the oldest brother's room. Mm. And so we was like, oh yeah, we finna just carry. This was back in the day where the TVs was pretty small, but it was still big. Was like, yeah, oh, we finna heavy carry as shit. It. Yeah, we finna yeah. carry. We finna carry the whole table and everything out uh, into the living room so we can all play. So we don't have to be in his room because he finna come home soon. Mm. Was like, all right, cool. So we we lift it up. We walking out, and then he walked through the door, and like everybody oh. scared him. Like oh, you know, he's the oldest. Yeah. Well, what y'all doing, bro? I just I said, oh, I don't know. He told me to move the TV. <laughs> oh no. He straight sold him out so fast, bro. <laughs> Threw him under the bus, bro. Yo, seven cannot be trusted, dog. I was Yo, seven was just like, oh, uh, ooze, ooze, ooze. I'm sorry, ooze, ooze. I was, I was guessing, uh, yeah, he told me to. <laughs> Bruh, after that, we moved the TV, but we had to move everything. Bro. We had to move the TV, the system, the controllers. We had to plug all the wires back in. We had to oh, plug it into man. the wall. Oh, you know, like y'all had everything out by the time he came home? Yeah, we basically was just moving the TV. Oh, everything else was moved. And after that, there was like, hey, you a stitch, guy. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, bro. <bruh. laughs> <laughs> I'm not even here. I'm going home. <laughs> I know. I called. Hey, Dad, pick me up, please. 
Damn, bro. And then PVO, man. It's not, it's not working out today. <laughs> I'm going to try again next weekend. <laughs> That will be hella awkward when you in the middle of your cousin's fighting, bro. Like, yeah. And then especially when the cousin that you came to the house for is the one that's losing. Yeah. <laughs> like if it's your cut, like if you go visit your cousin and the one that you came primarily to visit is yeah. the winner, it's not bad. But <laughs> when he get when he get beat up, he just sitting yeah. there like, damn, good. That's my I'm his plus one. <laughs> Wait, how many times did you witness him lose the uh, lose the fight, though? Man, we was young, bro. We, yeah, exactly. We always lost. Like, yeah. <laughs> we, what are you gonna do? You know, right? Not gonna win. <laughs> um, a couple times, bro. And then I was just, I was like, man, uh, <laughs> I can't help you, bro. You're a football player. I'm just a. <laughs> I'm it a game him. boy. I'm a. <laughs> <laughs> I hella snitched out on my. <laughs> I was like, bro, he told me to. Uh, he told me where to go, what to do. <laughs> what do you say in that moment? You're just like, uh, <laughs> oh, so I'm going home. <laughs> nah, it was it was quiet, bro. We we, yeah. we got yelled at a little bit, and then we took the game back in, and we went and sat in front, was sitting in front of the other TV, who was just like, and then my guys are looking. Man, you a snitch? <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was saying, man, you moved the TV back as fast as I did. You didn't yeah. want no problems. <laughs> uh, man. Shout out All to right. awkward situations, bro. Yeah, shout out to them, man. They made us who we are today. Someone who can barely still handle awkward situations. Because, <laughs> goddamn, I've been wanting to crawl into my body, bro. Hell nah. Well, what the <sighs> hell have you been up to, man? Oh, right, we man. figured out what the hell I'm doing with the company party. So what the hell have you been up to? Fantasy football, Marcus is in with us. Uh, Let's go. Uh, uh, we we had our fantasy football. <laughs> but you don't watch football, right? Not no, no. Okay. Not. We had our fantasy football draft. Uh, Marcus is in the league with us this year. Thank you for yeah. joining in, brother. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, for real, because we was looking, we was looking for people at the at the last minute because oh. we, we were gonna do it. So. Oh, okay. So yeah, uh, Marcus came in. He doesn't really watch football like that, and he only did basketball. Fantasy? He only did, yeah, only did uh, NBA fantasy. So is his first year, first year of football? Uh, well, yep. Well, second year. I did it last year for the first time, but first time with the boys. <laughs> yeah, the boys. How did you draft? Uh, like as far as what <laughs> my draft grade and performance it was fucking terrible. I like. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, it was, I mean, like, what was your setup? You were just on your phone, or yeah, I was just on my phone. Oh, bro, oh, this guy. Yo. I know everybody was sending pictures of the laptops. I was like, yeah. who? <laughs> what the hell, fucking draft analyst? Who the yeah. hell are y'all, bro? <laughs> y'all about to go there and meet Roger Goodell, bro? Fuck, I, could, bro? I couldn't. I couldn't do the, the computer, but I definitely had the iPad with my phone. You know, <laughs> you motherfuckers over here in the war room, bro, <laughs> with your peoples, bro. Making hey. phone calls, hell yeah. That's why I got my grade. That's why you got your heart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I you know, yesterday I didn't realize I well, I mean I knew that the uh the draft was at seven. But I was just fucking taking my time, bro. So I get off at like six and then I go and get some food and I'm chilling in there, bro. Just chilling. And then I realize it's like six thirty and I kind of didn't want to go home yet <laughs> after work yesterday. <laughs> so after eating, bro, I ended up just chilling in the car, smoking <laughs> cigarettes while the draft was going on, bro. That was like a solid hour. <laughs> Chilling in the parking lot, like fuck, bro. I should have just let this on auto draft because my shit was terrible, bro. <laughs> you drafted in the car with cigarettes after eating a, a fast food meal, bro. Yeah. Oh, hey, how no. can you assume it's a fast food meal? <laughs> Why'd you bro, assume that, bro? If you was at Applebee's, you would have sat at the table and drafted. You can't go do that at McDonald's. Them chairs is all freaking hella hard. <laughs> Ain't no cushion at McDonald's. That's true. <laughs> they do got like uh, lights on the tables now, though. Shit's hella fun to play with. What? Yeah, so they <laughs> <laughs> so they have these tables with like LED displays and shit. And when you like touch it, it lights up. So you could do like all these like designs and shit, make letters and shit, and it'll light up. <laughs> that's what got you. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, what yeah, that's what kept me there. <laughs> I was gonna go get. Some... I was gonna go get some roof. Even... I was gonna get some roof crisp, but you know McDonald's got the lights on the table. 
<laughs> My guy said Ruth Chris, <laughs> bro. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah, nah. I, I 22, 22 landing would have been cool if it had the, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if it had the lights on the table, but it didn't. Yo, <laughs> you be over there making letters, like would you be spelling stuff out or something? Yeah, <laughs> boobs, <laughs> boobs, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tits. <laughs> nah, uh, <laughs> um, nah. I didn't have no strategy, bro. I was just trying to fill out the roster. That's all it was. And I was like, wait. And then I, <laughs> I didn't realize how many mistakes I was making. Like I was just making hella mistakes. I was like. Oh, I know that guy's name. I know what he does. And then, <laughs> and then later on, I was like, I don't know any of these guys, and I need to fill this <laughs> roster out. I need to fill this roster out. <laughs> this is bad. Everybody has percentages and a- analysts like they're analyzing everything, and I'm just over here. I I'm having a cigarette. What What was your first? Do you remember your first couple picks? Uh, yeah, I got Tyreek Hill. Okay. And, uh, AJ Brown. Okay. Um, I got fucking. Uh, Trevor Lawrence as my quarterback. Okay. Yeah. That's and, who I uh, wanted. I wanted him. Yeah. I, I thought like QBs were like all the rage and shit in fantasy football, but I guess they're not. Not really. Like, uh, a, lot of, you know, a lot of y'all were picking your QBs late. I was like, whoa, what the fuck is that? It, well, it's because the QB slot is only one. You only have one. Well, we have two. Right. So our QBs go a little earlier. But if you look at it, we have two QB slots. And then you have two running backs, two wide receivers, receivers, and then two flexes, which could be running back. So essentially three running back slots, three wide receiver slots. Right. And, you know, the there's way more wide receivers. The quarterbacks, aren't, we, we added an extra quarterback uh, slot because we didn't have a lot of, I think we only had six people or four, so I don't know, something the like time. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, but we still keep it. And it, and it honestly it adds like a cool little, a cool little like extra feature because quarterbacks typically go later because you only have one slot, right? Like you know the wide receivers, the running backs, you're gonna need to you're gonna need way more of them, and then on the bye weeks you're gonna need to replace them. Exactly, quarterbacks right. you can kind of you know you can lose one week from their bye week. But see, my dumbass pick, I got Trevor Lawrence and Justin Herbert, but then I realized that you know two QBs, I'm like. I can I can only start one. No, no, no. Week. You got. Oh, two. you can do two. Yeah, you oh, actually. You I have a solid. Were... You have a solid QB uh, squad because we do two QB. So you. Yeah. yeah that's actually oh, really good. You, okay, I thought you had to. Uh, I thought you had to pick one during the week. I thought you know the second QB would be like QB two and shit or that you got to no. decide between. <laughs> oh. Not oh. In our, yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah. So it's yeah. You know maybe somebody should have explained this to you before. <laughs> I get the general concept of how to draft, but I'm just like, I have no good draft strategy. Uh I don't know, you know, who to get first. I don't know who to build my roster behind, Mm -hmm. you know, and the later picks. I don't know. Even the early picks, I don't know them, let alone the later picks. (laughs) I see the chat. It's like, who's Rasheed Green? I was like, bro, I don't fucking know, dude. (laughs) Marcus chose some random linebacker, and he was like, and Charlie goes, yo, who the hell is that? Marcus (laughs) is like, I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so so basically uh after we drafted they gave us an email to, to give us our draft report cards. What 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 you get, bro? Whoa, I forgot. Oh my fucking god. I got a I got a D. <laughs> I was scored a D for uh so just like looking around too much. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> it's just like it's just like college. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I got a yeah. Actually, it is because I'm. I got an A plus. You know. You know oh I'm my saying, god! I'm we saying. don't care, man. We don't care. Uh, I got an A plus. You know, I'm, I'm projected to go thirteen and one. You know, my my week ten. Whoever I'm playing in week ten, y'all finna crack my muffin, bro. Because I got like Whoa. seven. Or <laughs> first off, crazy. I got like. I got nobody like... wants to crack your muffin, bro. <laughs> You're crazy, bro. Guy gets an A plus draft grade. All of a sudden, people want to crack his muffin. <laughs> this guy's perverted, bro. <laughs> you know, you know, you got a D when you can't understand what's being said. That's his yes. comprehension <laughs> skills. His comprehension skills. I know they keep biting quest- me in the ass. Have <laughs> been questionable. See now, what you want? You think people want to bite your booty, but they don't want to crack my muffin? <laughs> <laughs> This guy, yo. This guy. Okay. All right. So what? Week 10. 
crack yeah, the muffin. Ten, I got I got like seven or eight players on my starters that are all on a bye week. <laughs> oh shit! Oh damn! So uh yeah, uh, other than that though, man, that was fun. I love fantasy football. It it, it it's gonna make you like you don't watch football like that. It's gonna make you watch it, bro. It it, it well you know when they say you got skin in the game, you just pay more attention. Mm-hmm. Fantasy football is you gonna be watching. The 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 most gar- <laughs> freaking Browns Thurs- versus Jets. <laughs> yeah, Thursday night, yeah, Thursday night football. You gonna, gonna be invested in that? Yeah, yeah. you are gonna be invested in the randomest, you know, games. But it, it's fun. You know, it makes it it makes it just way more appealing to watch teams that are not your team. Right. So yeah, man, I can't wait. Is there is there a site that I can use to watch games that were played already? Because I'd be missing them when they're live because I'm at work. Uh. If you I don't, don't feel know. Okay. All right. I, was about to say I got an don't. app. I pay for an app or my girl's parents pay for an app that we use and they have the, the VODs for the sports. Mm. But yeah, that's if you want to pay for it. That's I don't know Apollo, about. Huh? Yeah. Apollo Group TV. Yeah. Hey, man, if y'all, if, man, if y'all don't know. Hey, not a sponsor, internet, but. Yeah. If y'all got an internet connection, Apollo Group TV, man, man, y'all should look that up. I got it on my Fire Stick and my iPad. You know what I'm saying? Okay. All right, then. Uh, anyways, mm. so yeah, man, that was a long catch up, but that's what <laughs> that's what we've been up to. Uh, I'm actually gonna move some some stuff around so we can get to actual topics. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Okay, uh, <clears throat> let's let's start with the uh, the artistry. The artistry. Yeah. Okay. Um. So Tasi One K and uh, uh, Bad Boy Mook, they had the. Uh, uh, they, stack they bundle, the, the stack bundle podcast, and it was mm-hmm. talking about uh, the difference between uh, uh, NZ poly rappers and US poly rappers and the popularity between the two. Mm-hmm. You know, they were talking about um, how come NZ artists are a lot more popular than uh, US artists, and I think that's a great question. I didn't finish the clip, I didn't finish it, uh, and, and hear, uh, hear what they had to say, but uh, that's always a great question to, to talk about because you know, I've noticed that through years of just trying to tap in with the community music wise you know what i'm saying yeah and it's always the you know it's always our brethren out there in uh in uh nz in australia getting a, you know getting a lot of plays in the community mm-hmm. why, so. why why do you, when you see that and knowing like the history you know because we was in south Moor and it was playing it on tv and we got mm-hmm. that's how i really got exposed to their music i never really i didn't even know aradna wasn't from here oh, i used to yeah. think aradna i thought aradna was from the bay or something like mm. <laughs> Uh, but what, like, what when you when you seen them make that comparison? What do you think of when when you think of like our artists being who we are versus their artists being who they are, but them having immense success? Yeah. And we're we're more like you know kind of we're kind of there, but not very really. niche. Yeah, we're yeah. very niche here in the U.S. And you know, um, it, it brings me back to what we always talk about here. You know. And then see in Australia, there's a way bigger population of islanders out there who, you know, and what's the term we use all the time here, man, market share, mm-hmm. right? You know, uh, uh, they're, they're, they have their own version of Hollywood out there. And a lot of the movies are made from uh, Pacific Islander creators. You know what I'm saying? They, there's a, just a lot more exposure out mm-hmm. there in an NZ in Australia. So yeah. I think with that, there's a, a bigger advantage as far as, you know, getting more eyes to your work. You know, and that doesn't discredit them at all. That's just how it is. You know, yeah. a, you know, a bigger population is definitely going to lead to more eyes to the work. Mm-hmm. So we don't have nearly as much, um, nearly as much exposure here in the U.S. But you know, the people that we do have in our community, they do numbers too. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's kind of, I think the difference is like it's a lot more self-contained here in the U.S. Right? Like it's a lot as far as like a a, a bubble. It's us here in the bubble. Versus everything else that's going on in the U.S. versus or as like NZ, it's a lot wider, more spread out in NZ. Like we have mm-hmm. our own little, you know, self-contained universe here in the U.S. Whereas mm-hmm. NZ, the mainstream is us. You know what I'm saying? The main. Oh, you talking about is is you Pacific know Islanders. P- yeah, okay, Pacific okay. Islanders. Yeah, okay. for the most part. <clears throat> yeah, I would I would have to agree. Um. Yeah, I don't I don't think people really look at it like that. Mm. I don't think they they give enough thought to to really see the differences like in the struggles. Mm. And I didn't think about it either until we started talking about it like that. 
Mm-hmm. And it and it go it, it it even breaks down. So like so, bottom line is New Zealand and Australia have um, very big Pacific Islander communities in both of those countries. Mm. Um, I I'm because those are somewhat Pacific Islander land, right? Mm. <clears throat> like the Aboriginal and the you mm. know, the Maori. So mm-hmm. it's just <clears throat> about that. there's, and I think there's more. I think they said there's more Samoans in New Zealand than there are in Samoa. You know? Oh damn! Yeah, I can so believe that. Yeah, okay. They've been there. They've established themselves. You know, they they they've been there for years. The 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 numbers are just way up. So the the in terms of like, so imagine if you're a Samoan artist. And you come out and, you know, not like naturally, it's not really I don't think we well, we might consciously do this, but but just it's it's innate in us to support our own. Mm. You know, we might not know who this artist is, but it, if he got a sleeve or he's saying ooze or something and we know like, OK, he's one of us mm-hmm. automatically like it's just like a bump. It might not right. be a significant bump, but it's a bump. And mm. so out there for a, a Samoan rapper or a Tongan rapper to come out and make music like it's, it's so many people out there that are Samoan or Tongan that are going to just not blindly but they're going to just kind of be pulling for you even right. if they don't know you even if they don't listen to rap they're yeah. going to kind of be pulling for you their ears are going to perk up <clears throat> for sure yeah you know and that and that's like that's the norm out there because right. they have so many numbers as opposed to us where we have numbers kind of spread out here and there. We may have big communities, but, but in, in, in like, we can't be on TV. Right. We can't be on the radio like that. Right. Because when we break into a hip hop scene on R and B scene, so, something like that, we're not the people at the top of that. Mm. So we come in like people from New York, people from like, Maybe not Texas, but like Milwaukee or some some random, you know, in in our country, they will look at us and not know what a Samoan is. Yeah, there's no familiarity there. Mm-hmm. If anything, they're looking at us like, why the hell are they talking like this? Mm-hmm. Because they're just not familiar with it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, the different struggles between artists out there and artists out here, like uh, they are definitely talented. They are they definitely have the quality of music. Like you hear their stuff, you see their stuff, their visuals are incredible. Yeah. But you know, that all comes with the territory of being like the main group of people out there. Right. You know, because you could break it down to culture, why the culture thrives so much out there, which we've talked about before. Mm-hmm. Like it's easier to walk around in the Lava Lava in New Zealand than it is to walk around in California in the Lava Lava. You you do you walk in the in New Zealand and you probably there, there may be people who aren't Samoan, but they'll look at you and be like, oh yeah, I know what that is, and right. just keep it going because it's exactly. just oh that's an islander. Mm-hmm. And then you do it in this you do it in California where E around they looking at you like oh what the hell this is a cross dresser why the hell are you wearing a skirt the familiarity of cultures is just totally different so not being able to be yourself is 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 a struggle that we have that they don't mm. you want to talk mm. about um nepotism or you want to talk about generational wealth like they have Pacific Islander doctors out there. They probably have lawyers out there. They probably have, you know, like business owners, property owners, as opposed to out here. That's a dime a dozen. Like we, I mean, not a dime. That's like, that's, that's like one, you know, it's very rare. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a totally different struggles and you can see it. You can see it in equality. You know, they have everything top notch. Their their biggest artists are having like uh meetings with Apple Music and Spotify and all of this. And we're kind of like getting it out the mud, trying yeah. to establish ourselves in a in a community that that looks at us as guests. Not, well, we're all guests, but they yeah. they're not familiar with who we are. Okay. On okay. a on a on a grand scale, you know. So yeah. <clears throat> it's a lot of yeah. I seen I seen the topic, and I definitely wanted us to touch on it because. I don't see too many people breaking it down like that. Yeah. You know, they're not looking at it like, oh, the, the surrounding. They just look at the music. Mm-hmm. And if it just is the music, we're all talented. Like, yeah. if we all had the same resources and the same scenery with the same audience and the same them, like, we would all be thriving. There's right. no, there's no, di- but it's it's just a different struggle out here. Mm-hmm. And, you know, th- thankfully for them, they don't really have to deal with it as much. Mm-hmm. 
and they get the they get to the benefit off of that, which is what they sh- as they should. As they should, yeah. Yeah. So every artist out here in in the states, I, I think y'all should y'all should try to cater to that way. Mm. Y'all should try to tap in with the artists out there because they have a way bigger audience. Mm-hmm. They have a way bigger like like potential audience, especially for us. Mm-hmm. You know, and and that can only be you know that can only be, if you don't got a felony, you can go out there and tour. Right. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, people people don't see that man because of just the size of each country. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, the U.S. is bigger, so they're gonna think that we have more resources. You know what I'm saying? Or we, you know, you said to tap in with the guy, the guys in the community in uh, NZ in Australia because you know bigger audience. Mm-hmm. But most people wouldn't think that they do have a bigger audience just because of the size of each country. But it's like, bro, it's not about the size yeah. of the country, dog. Yeah. It's about the size of the influence that they have, which is mm-hmm. way bigger over there than yeah. it is here. It just seems very big because you know there are a lot of people if, uh, in our community here in the states who do numbers and stuff, you know, yeah, getting those same meetings, but they're very you know a small amount of people here. I don't know. I don't know uh, any. I've, I don't think I've seen any like stateside. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, who specific... isn't like hip? Oh, not even like mm-hmm. um, not even like you know reggae artists or. Well, I mean, Jay here. Boog. Yeah. Jay Boog most definitely probably has that situation. Maybe Fiji probably has that situation. But so so few, exactly. That's two. That's you know? that's my point. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's two over here versus over there. Uh, you know, those guys over there. There's plenty of people talking to those big music execs. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And so, I, and I don't want to be sound like a hater, but they get paid. Like they get they get grants from the government to make oh, music. Oh shit. NZ on air hands out. They they hand out grants to different artists that are of. Because you know it's 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 uh they're native to the land, yeah. So they're you know in the same way. So I'm learning out here all the indigenous people and and, and you know the the government, in in order to kind of like, the reparations to mm. kind of help out you know the fact that they did all the indigenous people dirty way back when, they kinda, yeah they kind of don't forget that yeah it's crazy they 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 kind of feed them but they feed them you know grants and they they help them out and you know all of that i'm sure in new zealand it's the same way because Mm -hmm. the maori people were taken you know their land was taken and they were you know all of that stuff so they're just trying to pay respects and so nz on air they actually give out grants to artists and you have to be like of certain descent like pacific islander descent and you can qualify for it you just let them know hey i got this song uh, they they'll fund the video, yeah. And yeah, I I actually I heard back in the day they had artists that would go and do a song and that really didn't want to do a song, make a video, and they would get a budget and they would say, okay, this is what it's gonna cost, and they probably get that seven eight thousand. I don't know how much they maybe they get like two three thousand, but whatever. Right. They get the budget for two or three thousand, then they go guerrilla warfare shoot the shots mm. that cost probably 500 bucks to, to do nice. so they make a 500 dollar video with a two thousand dollar budget and they just profit the 1500 and they like all yeah. right man we cool so yeah it's, it's just little things like that that just contribute to the disparity between what we doing out here and what they doing out there i mean i wouldn't <clears throat> call that hating at all man that's that's using what you got using your resources to your full advantage you know I, I, you know, you said you don't want to sound like a hater, but it's like, yeah. uh, I mean, this, these are facts, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, this is real. This is just how it is out there. Like, and I, I, we're not, we're not saying to not take advantage of that. Bro, I take it, bro, it feels like that out <laughs> but, here. We're like, bro, give me the grant. Bro. We're gonna figure it out, and I want to get paid to make great music. Okay, bro, we're I was trying this. to, I was trying to connect with one of the artists out, or one of the producers out there. Like, hey, bro, what's up, man? Just, uh, just do a song and have me as a feature. You can pay me the little seven hundred, all right? And then we yeah. just go about our business. You know, come but, on, bro. Yeah, yeah, nah, for real. So yeah, no, no disrespect to them because they doing their thing and they, they yeah, make, they, 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 they have always been. Mm-hmm. Like the history of New Zealand music, I don't know about Australia because they kind of, to me, they popped up when the drill stuff was happening. Right. And One Four is one of the biggest drill groups in the world. Mm. Salmon group, or I don't know if they're Salmon, but yeah, they actually got a song with Stone Dudes coming out. Oh shit! Yeah, so they came out to Washington and shot a video. So, oh uh, shit! Oh so yeah, so uh, I'm excited for that. Shout out to the Uso Stone Dudes doing big things. You feel me? Mm. Um. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, yeah, 
That's what it is. Nice. Man. Yeah, that's <laughs> the disparity right there. Well, I don't. I just don't want people to think that oh, they're fucking American guys over here talking shit about the NC. It's like, bro, this no man. Yeah. It, use the resources that these guys are giving you to do exactly what you guys are doing. Mm-hmm. This is that's exactly what you're supposed to be doing, bro. Why deny that shit? You know, do I, what you yeah. will. Just know I, that you know there there are many advantages that you guys have out there that that we don't. So take full advantage of that, man. Because mm-hmm. our struggles are different. There's struggles still, but our struggles are very different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, you know? and none is none is worse or better. It's just it's just different. So yeah, it's just different. That's all, yeah. man. That, Get that's, your fucking money and your music out already. <laughs> that's definitely that's to me that's definitely the biggest like contributor to why you know you kind of you see the difference in quality between our music mm-hmm. and their music. You know, uh, yeah. Shout out to them though. I'm a big I'm a big New Zealand music fan. Yeah. You know, uh, in Shamo when it was playing, you know, the Hypnotics, mm. uh, Nijin Mystic, freaking, um, I remember the dude Anonymous, he was a producer for, I think he was for Nijin Mystic or Hypnotics. He mm. was dope. Um, Sid, freaking Sid Diamond, mm. uh, Eva Lamcom. Oh, Eva, yeah. Eva Lancome is hard, bro. Yeah, I don't know what she's up to, but she's hard. Freaking, uh, what's what's the ones that tomorrow people, bro? It's so many. It's and like now I know the drill wave is like super big. Everybody's on drill music right now, but New Zealand music, like aside outside of the drill music, was incredible, bro. I never knew there was the Pacific Islanders out there doing that type of music. Yeah, so. Yeah, man. If I, I know, y'all... man. Like that's that's crazy. <clears throat> well, if uh, if you were them, what? Go, go check that out, man. If I was y'all, go check out some New Zealand, some classic New Zealand, Pacific yeah. Islander hip hop and R&B, whatever you want to call it, pop, whatever. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> Obviously, my like my intro to NZ music was like a Rodna and at ease, but yeah. then like you know, you brought up Eva Lancome, and I remember you being excited about doing the song with her, and then you know the song comes out. I was like, yeah, she's tight. This song Wait, is tight. I didn't do a song with her. I thought you had a song with her. Eva nah. Lancome? No, nah, but she's like a freaking major superstar, bro. <laughs> yeah, but back then, I thought she was talking. No, she was talking- but she was on like she was on MTV's top ten abroad artists in like 2007, bro. Oh, I could have sworn you had a song with her, dog. No, I don't think you talk about I know I think I know you talking about. It's not her. Oh. Damn, I'm just fucking wrong. <laughs> As yeah, usual, I, I have never, I have never talked to her before. <laughs> oh shit! What the fuck, bro? Yeah, I, I think sw- you talk about Erica. Maybe oh. it was a girl named Erica. She was hard. She turned into a, a gospel singer, but we oh, had a shit. song. Yeah, I don't know if it ever came out, but yeah, Erica was dope too. Oh damn, I don't know shit about shit. Getting, all right, man. Maybe you do need the Sunday brunch. You get yeah, out. Yeah, I'm get all the shit. God damn. <laughs> I could have sworn you did a song with Eva Lancum because that was the first time I ever heard of her was through you, and you was excited to talk. I thought you had a song with her, but I maybe I did a maybe I did a remix, and you thought it was. Oh, you know what? Maybe that's it. You know what? Maybe that's it. Yeah, you did a uh, you did a remix of her song. Okay, God damn it! All right, there it Yo, is. Yo, hey, well, hey kind let of me tell y'all thing. right now, SoundCloud Seth, bro. I was <laughs> hopping on every if it was if it was if it was a song that was popping or I liked it, I was on it. Yeah, <laughs> y'all lucky I'm nice now. I don't do that no more. But boy, I was stepping on toes back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah, man! Shout oh. out to them, man. What else is on the docket, dude? What what the hell is going on? Uh, we well, yeah, uh, Tua and Ryan Clark. Right. Yeah. I just uh, yeah, I I seen a little bit of that when it first broke. Mm-hmm. Uh, you was talking about that. Um, and I I I finally caught up before we started recording. Uh, Ryan Clark has some uh, spicy takes on uh, the show that he was on about Tua and his body, mm-hmm. you know, uh, saying that he looked like uh, the girls over there at Onyx, which is a big strip club. Is that he what he said? said? Yeah. He said, like, yeah, he's built like them girls at Onyx. And I think that's a strip club. <laughs> yeah. Ryan Clark wilding on TV, bro. He Wait, was well, I didn't know he said that. Yeah. I didn't yeah, read the like, comments. I just seen Tua's response. Oh yeah, Ryan Clark was going crazy on there, bro. I was like, yeah, Tua built like a uh, one of them girls over there. Onyx, it's like some big strip club. I was like, God, two of, bless two it, bro. Of the, two of the stallion. Yeah, right. <laughs> two of the stallion, exactly right. Two of Menage, bro. What the hell? 
Yeah, bro. Um, yeah, so he says all that causes a huge controversy, and then Tua responds. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you put that response in the note. Did you want me to read yeah. that response and what he said? Yeah, you can, yeah, read what he said. Yeah, so um, this dude, Tua, he responds to ESPN's co- or uh, Ryan Clark's comments about his physique, and he says, I come from a Samoan family. Respect is everything. If we need to get scrappy, we can get scrappy too. <laughs> <laughs> we can get scrappy too, brother. Oh, I Bro. fucked that up. What? <laughs> ha. You sound like scrappy dude with that one. Yes, yeah, scrappy. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I seen the video mm. of Tua replying, saying, I come from Samoa family, respect is everything. Mm-hmm. And boy, when I tell you, bro, like just knowing, just, bro, like I, I've said it before, bro, mm. Hawaii. And people from Hawaii, it's different. Yeah. They really be fighting, like, yeah. for real. I feel like it's like everybody in Hawaii trains MMA. They got the stance. <laughs> they do the kicks. Like, nobody else in this country fights <laughs> like motherfuckers from Hawaii. Because they, they'll, bro, they will kick your face, bro. Just knowing that he's from there, knowing everything that I know, that I've heard and that I've seen yeah. from anybody from Hawaii, bro. The men, the women, all of it. Yeah. I know he was holding back so much, bro. Man, I bet. Yeah. You know, he was about to break into it. Like, if he, re- you know, he was stammering a little bit. Like, oh, he was what? like, he was trying to find his words that would be cool to say in front of a microphone, in front of all right. these cameras. What is but my PR trained? Uh, it was like, right now, uh, you guys. <laughs> like I know you like bro, you like scrap, bro. You, yeah. like, <laughs> you like bang, bro. Like, bro, yeah. just I was laughing. I could not stop laughing, bro. Because I look at two like two of Samoan, you know. Mm. Samoan people are used to aggression. They're used to just, you know, the physical, combative confrontations, whatever. Right. But Hawaiians, like not Hawaiians, but like people from Hawaii on top of me. It's, oh my God. I just, I was laughing, bro. Yeah. I know he wanted to get real, dis- I, not even disrespectful. They're not even disrespectful. They just I be know. like, you come here. Like, this, we, you yeah, know, we're going to fucking do this or what? <laughs> huh? We, we going to do this or what? You going to get some lickings, bro. Like, yeah, you going to get just, some lickings, bro, right now. No, I just, no, it was burning inside of him. Like he burning just, inside he just, of him, he, it was burning in him. You know what I'm saying? So I just yeah. know it was just funny, bro. I watched it and I laughed though. Yeah, did you? I, I, did I, you I, I didn't see the video. Nah, I just mm. you know I just seen that quote. You know, uh, <clears throat> you know, someone family respectful, all of that. And I was like, yeah, yeah. I guess I should see the video because I want to see his anger in his eyes. Because apparently, and, and that's the thing. I don't think anyone else outside, like people who don't know, like people from Hawaii, I don't think they would, they would just, they would probably just see it and think, you know, oh, he's a mild manner. So I'm one, he, he, he speaks really well. And he, you know, he's yeah. very, he's like very too, you know, he's quiet. He kind of like Russell Wilson kind of thing. Right. But I would, I would bet the bank that he got that dog in him, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but you did, you said you did see the reply from Ryan Clark, right? Yeah. Yeah. I seen your, uh, I seen your tweet about it. And then I, I caught up with it, uh, this morning. Yeah. Uh, I think it's probably like one of the best apologies I've seen in a while. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want to apologize for something that you said in a public, you know, public forum, then that's probably the best way to do it the way Ryan Clark did. Uh-huh. Um, he was talking about uh, what he say? He said he had two jobs. One was mm-hmm. to be respectful of the players. Mm-hmm. And to have that or have that respect back, I, I don't want to misquote him, but it was yeah. it was really good. Yeah, it was a really good quote. Um, yeah, Ryan Clark, he he admitted his faults, and he realized what he was doing, and he said it in a um, he said it in a very genuine way. Yeah. You know, most of these apologies that we see are very half baked, not mm-hmm. thought of, or th- not thought out. You know, very mm-hmm. shallow. But his, you know, it seems like he put in a lot of thought into what he said. And he realized that people were roasting the dog shit out of him. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, good on him for making a, uh, you know, apologizing from the heart and being real about it. But then there are people who had problems with his apology still. Because he oh. said, yes, yeah, do you see that part? No, I didn't. So he mentions that, like, um, what is it? He said something like, you know, uh, you know, I'm humble. You know, you, you know, uh, I was wrong. I was being disrespectful. But, you know, don't come for me because, you, you know, 
uh, I guess people were speculating about like, I don't know, like a fight or something like Ryan Clark just sounded very like, you know, I'll still fight you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like, I can still fight you because I think uh, uh, people were saying that Tua says something like that, too. Maybe later. Well, maybe not. In the Tua, same interview. No, Tua said. It, oh, yeah. Scrappy, we can get scrappy. Right. If you get scrappy. Yeah. So he responded to that like, oh, yeah. I mean, if you want to get scrappy, I can get scrappy, too. You know, mm-hmm. but so and people had a problem with that, calling him like a hypocrite. And I was like, no, no, okay. <laughs> he's good. <laughs> yeah. In my eyes, he was good. Yeah. What did you so so? What would you rate it? One through ten apology rating. What would you give it? Oh, uh, I'll give it a solid eight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I give it a what, solid what eight. What would what would made it a what would have made it a ten to you? Um. Fuck. Uh. We see why know. Marcus isn't a teacher. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> teacher, why did I get a B plus and not an A? Well, yeah, well it wasn't uh, that good. I don't know. I don't know how else to tell you. It just wasn't that great. <laughs> yeah, let's just turn that to an A. Let's just get, yeah. get out of my face. <laughs> no, nah, um, I don't know. What like uh <laughs> if he maybe maybe if he went up or I, I guess he said he talked to Tua after though. Okay. But you know, maybe if I seen proof of that, <laughs> I'd move it to <laughs> 10. Here's the no. text. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> look at all fucking uh what's his name? Macklemore and shit. Oh god. Yeah, that's look at the show there. Yeah, exactly. But maybe if he did something like that, some kind of show, but then that's even more shallow. That probably would have brought it down to a seven point five. <laughs> <laughs> but uh <clears throat> yeah, maybe if um yeah, I guess that's it. That'll make it a ten. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Ryan Clark. I really did like his apology. Um I, I don't yeah, he he was saying something like, you know, he he doesn't he he doesn't believe that players should be commenting, like at a at a press release, they shouldn't be commenting on what other reporters are saying. Mm. Like when a player goes up, they should be solely focused on you know maybe the team, you okay, know, you know things like that. Not it shouldn't be focused on what another what a reporter has to say. He's never liked that, and so he didn't like the fact that he was the reason why this was happening. It seems more mm. gossipy, you know. It's more tabloidy than actual football journalism. Right. Uh, <clears throat> he did apologize. You know, he said he was wrong, and I respect it because we live in a time where, like, stuff like this, a, a normal journalist or maybe a, a you know run of the mill journalist, they would love this. They would yeah. love the publicity. Like, I could see another journalist taking this and running with it. Mm-hmm. Oh, what? You want to be a tough guy all of a sudden? Oh, you're in the NFL, buddy. You know, I could see, like, deflecting and just running it, running with it because that would just bring his profile up. You know, everybody mm-hmm. will be talking about it. Mm-hmm. And so for him to not take that route, for him to say, you know what? I was wrong. You know, I apologize. Mm-hmm. Um I think that speaks volumes to his character. I think it's dope. I think more we need more of it. Mm-hmm. Um, his his part where he was saying, you know, I can get scrappy too. He's a man. Yeah, you don't expect you don't you know like you could be wrong, like you could be wrong in a situation and still not tuck your tail. Right, exactly. Like it's like you know what, bro, I was wrong, but don't think you just finna come up in here, <laughs> you <Yeah>. know. <laughs> exactly. Like, you don't you know? Cause he, uh, yeah, he's he's gonna defend, you know, his him. You're not gonna. Yeah. Do, he didn't defend his comments. He defended himself. Exactly. You're, you know? you're not gonna punk this dude out of his humility, bro. Yeah. Like, you're not. You know. Yeah. You know. I, I don't expect a man to do that. If he did do that, then that's cool. I wouldn't look at him differently, but I know a lot of people might might. That's yeah. a big oh man, look at this dude. This dude's scared. He's scared. Right. You know, he 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 made it to where he apologized, but also showed that I didn't apologize because I'm afraid of you, because I'm afraid yeah. of getting scrappy. I just apologized because I was wrong and I felt yeah. I was wrong. So yeah, that that to me, that was that was as up there as you can get in apologies. So yeah. shout out to Ryan Clark, shout out to Tua. I was supposed to draft you, but I didn't. <laughs> <sighs> you know, it's all good. He I feel like he's gonna go off. But anyways. Mm. Speaking of Hawaii, no. Oh. Did you watch oh, wow. the Max Holloway fight? Uh, no, but no, no but I seen clips. Yeah. and God bless it, <laughs> Jesus. I'm telling you, bro, they Korean different out there. At, Korean zombie at that. Yeah, like he did that to the Korean zombie, bro. It, it was it was a good fight. It yeah. was a really it was really it was really a good fight, bro. It you know I expect the, fireworks, bro. When those two yeah. get in there, I expect that. Yeah, the, the 
he he even said uh Max Max even said I'm glad my 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 right connected before his did because it could have mm. gone either way they was they was swinging yeah and so you know he it was his it was Korean Zombies last you know UFC Hall of Famer for sure heard that too, it was yeah. his yeah it was his last fight he wanted to go out and they they had never fought before mm. um I just want to bring up some of the things before the fight they had the interviews you know and. When he started out the press conference, Max Holloway, they were like, yo, Max, how do you feel about the fight? He said, the first thing I want to say is, you know, I'm here, but my heart is with Maui. My heart mm-hmm. is with my people, Lahaina. Mm-hmm. And he was, he, at every chance that he got, he plugged in the Lahaina Venmo page on Instagram that has actual families from there that you could, di- you know, donate directly to. Oh, shit. He used this plat, bro. Every chance he got, he plugged that, that Instagram out. He pl- he plugged that Instagram in. He talked about the people. He talked about the devastation. He talked about being heartbroken. <clears throat> Did he Even come out to? Uh, he came out to Fiji song. Oh, I don't know. I, I heard he came out. To, yeah, nah, no, yeah. yeah I, I heard he came out to a uh, warrior. Uh, <laughs> yeah, bro. He, but but after he won. After he won, they said, yo, man, so how, you know, this part of the fight, you know, you caught him with that hook. What were you thinking? And he was like, you know, I'm thinking of my people in Lahaina. This is the Venmo. You guys go out there. You guys don't like is. And then and he also was just like, yo, man, give it. You know, he went and he, he hugged the Korean zombie dude. He picked him up off the ground. He went. He said, yo, man, make some noise for him. This guy's a legend. And louder, louder. You know, Max Holloway to me is easily the most likable athlete in the world mm. like i don't know who else i would put up there yeah. maybe george kittle <laughs> you know maybe george kittle uh travis kelsey maybe yeah but max holloway to me is undoubtedly hands down the most like like the, he's never had a situation where people have looked at him funny he's never really he, he's never been out of character yeah even it so i'll say this even in the controversial times of the pandemic, mm-hmm. when there was people taking a shot versus people not taking a shot. And he went in and he, he spoke on it. And there were people that jumped on his back for saying, you know, like, why are you endorsing people not taking a shot? He was like, I'm not endorsing it either way, but I'm just saying we need to remember that we're family. Mm-hmm. Like you guys are getting so caught up in this stuff. But at the end of the day, this is your neighbor. This is your, uh, he basically, he, uh, he went through that unscathed, but it's him, you know, like he went through it and he spoke his piece and he was even in, cause bro, the pandemic, it was at, people was at war with each other. <laughs> bro, were they? What like the freaking fuck, bro? Democrats and Republicans was like bloods and crips, bro. It was real bad. It's, yeah. It still is to this day, but he was able to, to toe that line and still speak his mind, but still do it respectfully yeah. and still do it with his people in mind, like yeah. ahead of his self. Right. And to, I just, I love everything Max does, bro. I'm a big fan of him, the way he conducts himself, the way that he cares for his Island, the way that he cares for his people. Mm-hmm. I'm a man. I, the, to me, there's, I don't, I don't know if there's another athlete, or celebrity that I like more than Max Holloway. Yeah, he's been oh, he's mm. always been super respectful in mm. everything that he does. Like you know, yeah. even in the fights and stuff. Like he's always been yep. respectful to his opponents. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Even while he's talking his shit during the fight, but that's a fight. But before mm. and after the fight, you know, he's always super respectful to his people. Like he's, he, I've never, you know, it's the same thing, bro. I've never seen him like do anything controversial, really. Mm-hmm. You know, so he's he's always conducted himself in a great way. So. Shout out to him, bro. Mm. Shout out to Max, man. Come on the show. <laughs> nah, man. Um, yeah, so he he uh he knocked out Chance Sung Jung uh into retirement. Don't do that. Don't do what? that, bro. Do what? He was retiring before the fight, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he talked he about was it. Getting up there. <laughs> he was getting up there, you old man. I just remember him doing the twister on uh, Eddie. Uh, no, not Eddie Alvarez. It was somebody else. Uh, Leonard Garcia. Mm. That shit was crazy. That but, was like uh, UFC four. I don't even think I was yeah. born. I don't even think I was born back then, bro. You was old as hell, dog. Hell yeah. But, um, <clears throat> damn, bro. 
I want to know, like, what? Wait, so he, like, what was his controversial opinion on the thing on the pandemic? He did, but it was it wasn't really controversial. But he didn't condemn the antis. Oh, like he he was kind of cool with both sides. You know, he was mm. he just he was in the middle. He yeah. was like, if this is you, this is you. If this is you, this is you. But or we're remember. us, right. you know. And so a lot of the people on both sides were kind of like, you didn't shame them enough or or you didn't stand up enough. Pick a or, side, you know, Max. Yeah, pick, pick a, a side. side. And he did it. He was like, yeah. yo, I don't care what y'all believe in, but you you got to remember that this is our family. Like our neighbors is our family. Yeah, We don't do this. We're not. We getting caught up in a stuff. This is not what we do. So and well, I might so be I might be forgetting. Spa? I might be you forgetting. Want... Maybe I'm mis mis <laughs> you know, maybe I'm missing yeah. some things cuz I just freaking yeah, I love everything he does. I love you, Max. <laughs> I love you, was, man. Maybe he was really over here just banging on people like, "Man, I can't yeah. get that." I don't remember it exactly, but I'm pretty sure he was like, "No, yeah. Love each other. So yeah, not somebody's you know? gonna find something and be like, "Hey, you know what? No, Sefa, you were wrong, dude. <laughs> he was actually super controversial and racist." No, I mean, no. <laughs> shout out to Max, man. He the man. Yeah. Max Hell is yeah. the man. Yeah, yeah. What else <laughs> we got, dude? What's what's the deal? Uh, I mean, we could rest in peace, Bob Barker. Yeah, we gotta end it with that. Okay. We can't we can't do this episode without saying that. Mm. Rest in peace, Bob Barker. Uh, I don't know if it was an appropriate meme, but it didn't seem malicious. People were saying, you know, how how uh, I don't know, it was ironic or whatever that he passed away at ninety nine, the closest you can get without going over a dollar. I don't know. I don't know if that was bad though. Like I seen it and I was just like, okay. There's- <laughs> if it made you uncomfortable, then maybe that's your answer. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not, because- I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, that's that's kind of funny. Yeah, it was just like cool. I was like, oh wow, that you know. Oh, yeah. Wow. Um, but I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, Bob Barker passed away in '99. Uh, for those of y'all who may be too young to remember, Bob Barker was the face of the prices. Is right for ever. Yeah. Um. Did you when you got the news? How did you feel? Um. It just took me back to the scene from um Happy Gilmore. Mm. You remember that? Did you watch? I you watched that? I watched no? it, but I don't remember. Bob Barker and Happy Gilmore were teamed up for a celebrity uh a celebrity uh pairs golf tournament thing, <laughs> and those two get into a fight, and Bob Barker beats the shit out of them. <laughs> So immediately took me to that um, and just it made me remember the times that I would watch it with my dad, with my parents when I was younger, when I'd stay home from school, too. Mm-hmm. So, you know, especially now with like the older folks too, like uh, my dad's sister, because she's she was everybody's grandma here. So mm-hmm. when she was still with us. Uh, she was watching The Price is Right with her man downstairs, my uncle. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it just brought me back to the times where like, yeah, yeah, he was always there. He's been yeah. there for a large part of my life. Bro, and not even and you, thinking about it. Yeah, it's the same year. Well, you know, I just remember, you know, somebody posted uh they posted a meme with four pictures on it and they said in memory of Bob Barker. And it said it had um a box of a box of crackers, mm. a bowl of soup, some seven up, and an ice pack. Mm. And it was it it basically meant, you know. We would watch those game shows with our grand. I would watch those game shows with my grandma when I would be sick and and home and not going to school because you know they kind of played like 11, 12, you know, like when we was usually at school. So on sick days, when you when you wasn't feeling good and you had to stay home and you know you want to watch TV, but your grandma's there, so you watch and none of our shows was on, yeah, they have cartoons going at you know 10, 11 o'clock. All the kids was in school, Mm -hmm. um. Yeah, there's a lot of memories. A lot of memories with Bob Barker. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Bob Barker, Richard. You remember Richard from uh, what was his Family Feud? Mm-hmm. He was the super old dude, and he was this white guy. He would always kiss the girls. I always thought he was the coolest dude ever. Mm-hmm. His name was Richard something. And, uh, he he was the host of Family Feud way back when he used to have those little lights on the edge of the things. Oh and yeah, okay. It yeah. looked like they manually flipped for the <laughs> for the answers. <laughs> um, yeah. So he it, those 
you know, the the newlyweds. You know, what what are some TV shows they used to watch, like the game shows? <clears throat> um, what the newlyweds? Uh, Hollywood Squares. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Hollywood okay. Squares. Um, shit. Deal or No Deal. Uh-huh. Um. Yeah. Who wants to be a millionaire? I I didn't really watch like the old school ones. Uh. uh what else? Price. Uh. Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of, of Fortune. course. Wheel of Fortune. Jeopardy. Wheel know? of Fortune and Jeopardy is a little different. I feel like they're the commercial successes. Of that, okay. The- you know what? That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. But yeah, like you know the the deal or no deal. Who wants to be a millionaire? I was super into who wants to be a millionaire. Because I thought I could at least get one thousand dollars, <laughs> I probably wouldn't make it to a, a million or not even like twenty five k. But I'd probably get like a cool little thousand dollars. You, you get know? one answer right. Yeah, I'm gonna go home. Yeah, <laughs> you have three okay. lifelines, Marcus. Uh, I don't care. I'll take the fifty dollars. <laughs> I want to go get a PS five. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, those those are my go to man. Yeah, I used to watch the super old ones with my grandma, mm. like the old the old newlyweds. The old family feud. Um, there was one where it was it was uh the two people would they would ask these two people questions and there was a panel of celebrities mm. and the celebrities would all uh, like like uh the person would answer the question and then all the celebrities would answer and whoever had the same answer with most the more celebrities would win the round or whatever. I used to love that show. I don't know what it's called. Oh, yeah, they you know, and it, so yeah, I used to watch all of that with my grandma. Seeing Bob Barker pass made me super sad. Mm. Like I feel like I don't know, bro. I think I think we in we in this time of life and this chapter where like every time every time someone passes, it kind of it kind of it's like a reminder that like oh. You're gonna die. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, you just thought of that concept, bro? No, yeah, I, bro, I it mean, it sucks, dude. Life, is, life has been great out here so much so that I kind of forgot about that. You know? <laughs> yeah, we all need a little sadness in our life to remind us that uh, the inevitable is coming. Yeah, oh uh, yeah. Well, uh, all of these, <laughs> all of these situations happening, it just reminds me of my mortality. You know? Yeah. Like, Yo, chill, bro. Like, chill oh, the fuck damn. out, bro. God, like, you're making us really sad right now. Like he's 99, being rich and having resources for the majority of his his adult life. Man, I'm I'm like 31, and I have no resources, yeah. <laughs> and none of what he had at 31. So I'm looking at. Less than that. <laughs> yeah. Well, stop looking how at less, it like how yeah. less. I don't know. Yeah. Hopefully <laughs> not a lot much? less. Yeah. <laughs> stop it, bro. <laughs> but yeah, the stuff like that just it just sh- it, it kind of shakes me a little bit. I won't, I'm be like <laughs> brutally honest, bro. I'll be like, that's okay. Who you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it should be that should be or your reason to just do what you need to do mm-hmm. to become Bob Barker successful. You know what I'm I saying? Because yeah. I I wrestle with this shit all the time, dude. Yeah. I'm right there with you. I'm like, that's oh, our, bro, that's why we're best friends. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just this slow march of time. It just keeps <laughs> crawling, bro. Okay, it it looks like a crawl, but it's not. It's speeds towards you it's, like a train. So you like a run. Yeah, yeah. Like... You better fucking learn how to get your ass up and do something, man. Because this is <clears throat> this is it. This is <laughs> this is it. You only have one life. <laughs> Fuck. What is this, bro? I don't know what just happened with this, bro. He wasn't yeah. getting real sick. I know, man. R.I.P. Bob Barker, man. Yeah, rest in peace, in Bob, peace Barker. to Bob Barker, man. Um, uh, also, the the, you know, oh, you're Simone. Please, if you come up here, please don't pick me up. <laughs> wait, what? What's You've that never from? seen that? No, I've never seen that clip, bro. Bob Barker has had horrible, um, a horrible record with Simone women winning. He had one woman, Simone woman. She won. She got up there and she lifts him up. <laughs> He literally listen was like yeah yeah and then um another time he had it he was like are you someone and she was like yeah he's like if you come up here please don't lift me up yes. <laughs> and i'm pretty sure she won and went and lifted him up like <laughs> yeah bro God damn ladies why can't y'all damn Yo, chill bro, i'm telling you bro it's a classic we're gonna dig this up i'm gonna make a clip out of it and i'm gonna Ooh. post it today rest in peace bob barker hey. shout out to whoever auntie that was whoever mama that was you know you made a you made a historical moment. We about to make it viral again because oh yeah, put me to. on, bro. <laughs> put me on. Yeah, that's awesome. 
Shout out to all the South, the, the, all the Pacific Islanders that was on game shows that I used to watch. I used to always go for y'all, bro. <laughs> Man, I was tripping out when I seen that on Family Feud recently. It was like a rerun, obviously, but it wasn't a recent one. I think it came out in like 2019 or something, 2020, mm-hmm. but it was like a, a, it was a Hawaiian family. Oh. Yeah, see, it had the long last name. Uh-huh. I was like, oh, oh okay, yeah. You know, you know, it's funny, my uncle actually, he was on Price is Right and he won. For real? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you got to dig that clip up. What the hell? Yeah. Yeah. Shout out my Uncle Grass. Uh, yeah, he won. He uh, he won a car, I think. You know what they do, though? You know how you win uh, the first hat? Like, you you win the first prize, and then you go to the 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 show, the main showcase, whatever. Mm-hmm. The showcase showdown, or whatever they call it. And then you yeah. win the car, or the trip, or whatever. They actually, ask, they tell you, okay, but you have to pay taxes on these. Mm-hmm. So then yeah. you he sold the computer that he won in the first half mm-hmm. to pay off the taxes for the car. Nice. Yeah, okay. but he won a car. They was watching it they were like, what the hell? He's doing that? <laughs> yeah, that's tight, bro. Yeah, man. Shout out to Unk, man. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah. Shout out to you know Bob Barker. Shout out to everybody, man. Drew Carey. Oh, yeah. New host, you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Thing. Um uh, what else you got, bro? What, I what think else I, is on the docket? I think that's it, man. I think we solid, bro. Yeah. Um, appreciate y'all for tuning in, man, for watching us, uh, mm-hmm. letting us know how you feel, man. Tell you know, telling us about the show, leaving your comments, your responses. Please um leave us comments, questions, responses, whatever you want, man. Talk to us. Let us know what you want us to talk about. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Um, follow us everywhere at the Politic and Podcast. Follow the Uso right here at Sefa M. Follow me at Oh Hello Marcus. Uh, we got mm-hmm. the Patreon going too. Uh, Patreon.com slash the Politic and Podcast. Y'all already know what it is. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we have things going on during the week now that's keeping us very busy. We're here <laughs> working because of y'all. And we appreciate y'all, man. Yeah. Um, and uh, also the mailbag. And the mailbag. Please yeah. send in the questions for the mailbag because we love hearing y'all's responses and questions because, man, y'all be asking some awesome questions, all right? <laughs> Fucking hilarious. Um, yeah, yeah don't, and don't forget, not just questions. You know, if y'all see some current events that we may not pick up on, you know, if you see something in the news and you're just like, hey, man, maybe y'all want to talk about this. We're not going to take every consideration, but we definitely going to look at it. Uh, and also, like... Uh, some life advice, some scenarios, you know? Yeah. We, we actually got a really good one. I can't wait to talk about it on, on, mm. on this weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, scenarios, situations, you know, if you if you if you in a fork in the road in life and you want to hear two idiots, you know, what they think, you can ask us and then hear what we have to say and then not do it. So you then know what you know, I'm saying? You might not know what to do, but at least now you're gonna know what you definitely won't do. Exactly. <laughs> we'll just give you wrong answers only. Yeah, yeah, you know. Um, yeah, so all of that, man. Any anything really tap in with us, send us a message on the Instagram. Even um on Spotify, we see the comments on Apple Podcasts, leave some reviews, leave some nice words, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Five stars, we really like that. Four stars is cool, three stars, <laughs> you know. Make sure you put that this cousin Marcus is for the three stars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, that's all I had to add. Uh, yeah. Um this has been another episode of the Polytech and Podcast, you nerds! <laughs> I'm Marcus and SFM, bro. We out. Go Fast Way 4. Fuck! Yeah, yeah, fuck. <laughs>